Welcome to Healthcare Designed by Your Body. Today's presentation is going to be on a modality I use in my practice known as Body Talk. My name is Lynn Morales and I am the daughter of a surgeon and a nurse. So I definitely have allopathic medicine in my blood. I spent 28 years on the administration side of healthcare in corporate America. Uh, and actually have been a naturopath since 2003. But clearly the focus in my practice is in my body talk work. You'll see here that I am a certified body talk practitioner uh, and I've studied uh, through the Parama body talk level, which is basically PhD level work uh, in the body talk world. And I'm also known as a certified body talk access trainer that's a one day entry level body talk course uh, taught to parents, teachers, coaches, you name it. Um, and it's really a phenomenal class. You'll see some testimonial about it momentarily. Um, it basically, it enhances wellness in the body, allows the client that I work with or anyone else uh, to receive and accept treatment um, from other specialties with a whole lot less strain on the body. So it's really a phenomenal uh, coursework and a great tool to have in your home. So let me tell you a little bit about my personal health experience, my personal health journey. You know, in my late 20s, I started having some low back pain issues, hormone issues, and you know, other people would say to me, oh, you're just getting old. And I thought, seriously, I'm not old. Um, and, and so what I started to do is I started to see a, a chiropractor who practiced um, applied kinesiology. There are subspecialties in chiropractics. A lot of people don't know that. And what happened is he started to tell me as he worked with my back pain that I was starting to have some issues with some of my female body parts, to which I said, hey, doc, I need you to stay in your lane, work on my back, um, because that was very odd to me that he was talking to me about body parts that my other doctor talked to me about. Well, it intrigued me, quite frankly, on the way home from that visit with him because I knew that my body had told him things that I didn't and I didn't know how he did that and that's the science of applied kinesiology so I'll let you look that up and learn more about that science but also another significant point at the age of 36 my father was diagnosed with lung cancer he was uh, at uh, a cancer uh, teaching hospital probably one of the best in the country he had what best the uh, allopathic medicine world and cancer research had to offer him at that time um, and that was my pre-k body talk life uh, I didn't know body talk yet I worked with a modality that was uh, very much um, uh, less involved than what I do today and uh, there's a special story I tell in my body talk access class I won't share it today uh, kind of a teaser. It's an amazing story though of what my dad taught me about how the two sides of medicine could work together um, while he was uh, moving through that that process uh, with cancer. And so um, the two sides of medicine can work together and that is what I'm committed to and I feel like that's the message my dad imparted in me uh, back then and that is when I actually started to search out body talk I didn't know what it was called at the time, but that's when the journey started. So one of our um, amazing uh, instructors, uh, Tracy Clark, she says, I, I know of no other system of healthcare that takes the time to hear the whole story, addressing the whole person as opposed to the symptom or the disease. You know, your health is unique and each and every person is exposed to a completely different set of details. You know, it's choices, it's experiences, it's environmental factors and so on that make our health stories unique. So think about identical twins. They may have the same parents and they may live in the same house, but maybe one got along better with mom. Maybe one had an injury on the playground that was very serious. Maybe one was exposed to a toxin. So then it stand a reason that each person should have a customized healing formula set up that caters to their unique current and state of health. And that's what we do with this modality. We customize healthcare through the details. So, you know, often what the main complaint is for a client, here in this case, the neck, 
uh, is not necessarily the main focal point for a body talk practitioner, as you can see the red over the right knee. Again, this is something that sets us apart from conventional care and it contributes to our lasting results. It shows us that it's not only the symptoms that are important, it's the details behind them. You see, the common experience for most people is to get a diagnosis. So what's a diagnosis? <laughs> it's a label. In this example, the diagnosis may be something like fibrositis, but what's that? Well, that's inflammation of a muscle fiber. So when the diagnostic approach is taken, what's really behind, quote unquote, the sore neck is missed. And this is why it's so important to look at the details and the systematic approach. So the, the problem is the expectation that there's only one root cause. The neat thing about the body is that it has that ability to cope and adapt to stress or what I like to call the details of the story. Eventually, the body will have adapted up to the point where we can no longer adapt without experiencing symptoms. So we accumulate stress and that equals the details of the story. The body can't adapt and that's when we start to get symptoms. So let's break th this down a little bit closer, look at a symptom together to get a more clear picture of why the details are so important. So imagine a timeline. It begins with conception, it continues until death. There'll be a portion of that timeline that's symptom-free for most of us. In other words, our body's doing a good job at adapting for us, keeping us below our threshold or maintaining itself. But daily, you know, it's possible we're exposed to an additional stressor that maybe a stressor that's not able to be processed and released. And the body remembers or stores the memory details in the tissues and the DNA. So, you know, which one is the true cause? It's likely a straw that broke the camel's back and the body says, enough already. I can't take it anymore. And an accumulation or an inability to process stress happens. So let's walk through some details here. Let's take that first dot where there's a stored emotion in this particular person of a fear from the, his father's lectures about working harder and acting more appropriate like his big brother. And how about that second dot? Later on in life, he has a football injury to his knee and he can't quite heal properly because of the emotional storage of fear from early childhood. Interestingly enough, the knee relates to our fear and willpower. So when we experience knee issues, it can be as a result of fear. Now how about dot number three? Aggravation of that injury with continued overuse and running because this stems from his need to succeed from earlier on. And here's where that concept of willpower comes in, an unhealthy expression of will to attempt to overcome fear. The fourth thought, the family stress due to feelings of never being around and interpreting his son's acting out as a result of his inadequacy as a father. Then you've got the fifth dot, the boss's critiquing of his work and his work projects, which inevitably leads to the proverbial pain in the neck, the main complaint. And when these things are all lined up, they eventually lead to dis-ease. So another great example is people suffering from severe back pain. So many people report they just woke up with it or it came on to them when they just bent down to tie their shoes. You know, the act of sleeping is not the cause of severe back pain, although it was the only thing that appeared to be happening between the time they had no pain and the time they didn't. Or what about that person who had that pain tying their shoe? Is it really the act of tying their shoe? I had this exact situation happen in my life. I bent down to pick up the Houston Chronicle one day and suddenly I couldn't move. I was stuck. Now, did the Houston Chronicle weigh that much more than the Dallas Morning News? I think not, but it was the exact same scenario. So depending on the kind of problem the person presents with, 
they may be able to go to a healthcare professional that's able to remove some of these stressors, right? Whether it's physical, emotional, or biochemical. And usually it's enough to move below the threshold. The body maintains itself and it's symptom free again for a time. This happened to me with that back pain. I ended up with a TENS unit, muscle relaxers, painkillers, and I was able to move below that, that pain threshold again. But then there's those times when it seems like nothing helps and that client's not able to get back into that threshold. And this is because the symptoms are being treated or masked when what is needed is greater focus on discovering the details. And I mean all of the details. We call these the stressors so that the entire content of a person's life is available to initiate the natural healing response. So let's talk through this example. In that first dot, there was an intense fight for this man when he was in utero between his mother and father, okay, during fetal life. It was a surprise pregnancy, and the stress of the news led to fear, anger, and blame between his parents. In the second dot, this particular gentleman has had residual toxins from chemicals in a childhood immunization. Later on, he was bullied at school, only adding to the stressors. Fourth dot there, he has stress of not having enough money to support his family. And then when we get to the fifth dot, the physical strain of bending down to tie his shoe. So once we understand that there have been many stressors on the body-mind complex since the time of conception, and many past issues can be lurking in the memory of the tissues, it makes sense that there might be several factors that need to be recognized to get back into the symptom-free state. Look on the slide at all the different opportunities there might be for stress. There's millions of them, millions of stressors that we experience in our lives. Many balance and resolve themselves before symptoms are experienced. This is attributed to that innate ability of the body to heal and adapt. But there are those that weigh heavier and are causative factors to disease. Finding them can be daunting, especially when the client feels they've tried everything. And sometimes what's a causative factor to one person might not influence another person. That's why we need to have a customized approach. So with body talk, we look to reveal the hidden stressors and you can see them here on this timeline now. They're old habit patterns, belief systems, physical tensions, scar tissues, etc. So we can step into a much healthier state of being. In other words, we're looking to identify the details from your body's story, holding you from that natural healing response. So many of us go through life with a complete lack of body-mind awareness. We look at the symptom and that's all we see. Our priority needs to be about focusing on the details of the story because it's these details that are the underlying cause of our dis-ease. So how do we do this? We first got to understand the subconscious mind. It's the storehouse for all your beliefs, all your memories, and all knowledge. So your subconscious mind is like your autopilot for disease, but it's also your autopilot for health and healing. It's the master interpreter of the incoming information pulling from a library of past experience that it holds onto and operates from. So I need you to think of the brain as a radio receiver with millions of tiny antennas attuned to the world around via the five senses. It's through our senses that we experience and interpret our world. Each word, each touch, each smell, each observation represents a vibration. And that subconscious catalogs it and gives it a meaning. So let's talk about a vibration or a frequency. You know about these, right? A radio wave can can come into your car radio and become a sound or an, and a song, right? But it can also be interpreted as a fax document. See, it's frequencies or vibrations that can manifest into physical things that we experience every single day. In the case of the body, the radio waves are like our thoughts, our emotions, our energy, which can and do show up in our physiology. Let's see some examples of how a thought 
can lead to a physical sensation. Now here's an amazing scenario. Robert Moss, this foundation for cancer research and wellness. What he did here, I'll summarize it. They took athletes and they, and they used this concept to train them for sporting events. They took these skiers and they hooked them up to an EMG monitor that sent electrical impulses to the muscles while they only rehearsed the downhill run in their head. They only rehearsed it in their head, but the muscles, the EMG still recorded these impulses. Robert Moss goes on to say, under clinical hypnosis, someone who is told, i.e. a thought, that he is being touched by a red hot object often will produce a burn blister, even though the object touching him was at room temperature. M amazing. Or how about the placebo effect? It's a perfect example of this, where a change in our belief systems and our attitude towards getting better can influence our ability to heal. Notice in the center here, it talks about uh, from the pinch of a shot to a doctor's white coat, again, all about placebo effect. My mother-in-law was an amazing example of this. She overcame multiple bouts with cancer and multiple other issues in her health, yet she died peacefully in her sleep at the age of 92. Not from any of these diseases and illnesses. You know why? Because she believed wholeheartedly in what her doctor told her. And when she would see her doctor, the doctor would say, this is what's going to happen in your next procedure for this issue. And this is how you're going to make it through it. And guess what? She did. She did amazing. So a lot of times people ask, is body talk a placebo effect? Well, honestly, we hope it is. We'd like to think it is, quite frankly. Because a placebo is something that demonstrates that a person can heal even if the treatment is pretend. So what is it actually showing us is that the body can heal itself. And that is what we're saying. If conditions are right, the body can and will heal. So it reminds me of this Einstein quote, no problem can be solved from the same level of thinking in which it was created. Our thoughts, emotions, and belief systems affect in such a way that without a transformation in our attitudes, thoughts, or belief systems, which one might call a shift in perspective, you won't be able to move past the problem. Or how about our bodies does have that ability to self-heal and self-regulate, but unfortunately we stuff it in the dark corners and filter our senses so that our experience of life feels safe. In other words, we're not processing and releasing our stress. Instead, we push it away, we dampen our senses so that it doesn't hurt so much. But it's simply going to surface again in another way until we're ready to address it. If we can highlight the whole story, we have the ability to shift our perspective and direct the subconscious mind to operate from a whole level of health. So how exactly does the body heal? Well, the ability of the body to heal is an innate feature and we're all born with it. Otherwise, how would we maintain ourselves? What's stopping it from doing this? Well, that's your story. By finding the details, we can understand the story, thus allowing for the instructions to change. We do this by simply restoring communication between different parts of the body and or by releasing stored emotions or by processing the stress. It's just like that aha experience you've felt from time to time. Maybe when just the right word brings about understanding and acts like a tuning fork to allow for a shift in a worn out pattern that we've been using. Do you ever know anyone who had an aha moment about diet once they suffered a heart attack? That's a hard lesson, right? But you gotta listen to the body and your body's telling a story. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Here's a great quote off of an ESPN article. This is a professional golfer. And this particular person says, they used a new therapy called body talk and told me I probably got the problems in my hip because of the things I was, have gone through in my personal life. It was a mental thing that made me fragile in a physical way. All was fine after September. I can swing the clubs like I want now. This particular person was going through a breakup in their family and a divorce. 
Now, I love how your body talks, and I want to give you two examples of this. We're going to talk about the wrist for just a second. So any of you out there with a wrist ache, this might be for you. The wrist, it says, I'm a complex character because I have such close ties to the hand, which is one of the most expressive parts of the body. I have to be very flexible and mobile, so I have eight small bones to give me that incredible precision of movement, which actually requires a lot of intelligence. So it's little wonder that the stomach controls me. The stomach represents the conscious mind. And so when you start thinking too much, and especially when your thinking becomes rigid and narrow-minded, then I become rigid. And if you can't stomach, in quotes, your life and what is happening around you, then you will start having indigestion. And I, as the wrist, will ache and degenerate. Or how about the large intestine? It says, you may think that my role is to eliminate waste and roughage as a result of the digestion of food. I do much more than that. I also eliminate impure thoughts and emotions as a result of your life experience. To do this, I'm able to generate grief to help you let go and move on. The desire to be in control of every situation leads to the inability to surrender yesterday's emotions, which you call constipation. When I'm functioning properly, I allow for the ability to release the past and cleanly enter each day with an open mind. So I'll ask you, take a look at the different body parts on this slide. Any of them sound like you? Any of them ones that want to be speaking to you right now? So I think you're starting to understand why we call it body talk, right? We give the body a voice. As a body talk practitioners, we're trained to be expert listeners, which allows us to be excellent communicators. We're promoting the body's ability to self-heal. And that's important because everyone and every body can self-heal. The fact is that sometimes you have stressors or environmental factors that prevent your body from self-healing. And this creates a breakdown in communication. Sometimes it can be as simple as the heart and the liver not communicating. Seems simple. Too simple, right? Think of it like the relationships in a family. What if two siblings living in the same house are not talking? Can you imagine the tension this would cause? By simply restoring that communication, the whole dynamic in the house would change. This is what body talk does. This is why I'm often called upon to prep a body prior to a surgery, especially if a body part or an organ is being removed or added. Remember, one body but many parts. It's like a neighborhood in there, and they all need to be getting along. So there may be a void or a need to help parts get acquainted. Now here's probably the best example of self-healing. You don't even have to think about it, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes you're so stressed out or there are other more serious conditions going on and healing that scrape is just not the body's priority. The body has priorities and it often makes decisions on what's gonna take priority. So similar to catching a cold, right? Some get over it in a few days because they're active, they're healthy, they eat well, and they don't have a lot of stress. Then there's others who've, who have cough that lingers or because they're under stress or maybe they're a smoker or their immune system's sluggish. These are really simple examples, but they give us an understanding that stressors and other influences affect our body's ability to self-heal. And these are just the surface symptoms. In Body Talk, we take a much deeper look. And let me show you how we do that. So your body's got an innate intelligence that knows everything about you. It has a natural impulse towards balance. And sometimes if you're tuned in, your innate communicates with you through subtle feelings. A gut feeling, maybe a nagging thought. So here is a fantastic example of this innate impulse towards balance, and that's conception. From the moment of conception, your body knows how to create itself, heal itself, and adapt itself. So think about it, conception, two cells that divide into four, that divide into eight, and so on. 
How do they know which ones will be the liver versus which ones will be the heart? Ever think about that? We are not creating anything new with body talk. It is a regression or an unlearning back to the idea that your body can do it. It can self-heal. So the only question I have to look at is what's stopping it? What's stopping your natural healing response? So body talk allows us to interpret everything that innate is telling us, your innate wisdom. So we're going to look at these three parts of the body talk session. Biofeedback technique, structured intuition, and then this amazing protocol chart that you see on the right-hand side. I have a giant size chart like this in my office and four more like it to take us in so many different places that we need to go to bring about healing. So it's really important that you understand that biofeedback isn't new. It's the science of applied kinesiology. So for my left brain viewers, it's a science. Look up applied kinesiology and learn. It provides an outlet for that intuition. It's a tool to help us actually physically translate what we're listening to. So biofeedback isn't new. Other healthcare techniques use it. It's a form of biofeedback that others in many different modalities use, but ours is a little bit different. We use it to get a yes, no loop so that we can really hone in on the information using what we call structured intuition. So what is that? All right, it's left brain knowledge and it's right brain intuition. So the left brain is only powerful with the knowledge it can access. So some think intuition is unreliable because they don't understand it. Everyone has perfect and powerful intuition, but what filters are blocking it is the question. So what are filters? They're like conditioning in life, our beliefs about what's possible or not, what's appropriate or not. You see, body talk practitioners are trained how to utilize our own intuition, but it's structured intuition. Structured intuition describes using left brain knowledge and structure to provide a framework within which the unstructured intuition can be expressed. So some feel right brain is unreliable, and that's usually an excessive light left brain function person, which is what I used to be. Right brain thoughts feel threatening, especially to a rigid left brain thinker. So when the promptings of our intuition are disregarded and disrespected, the left brain becomes increasingly dogmatic and rigid. So, so a practitioner uses that structure, that framework of the left brain combined with their intuition and creativity to move freely to find those details of your story. So when you think about it, it's the concept of structured intuition is in every industry, in every aspect of life, every profession. The difference is it's often used in a pick and choose manner instead of being respected for the importance of the whole. Again, everybody uses intuition. So picture this chef. He's going to find that right spice. He tastes it, right? Remember bringing in the information through his senses to finalize that amazing recipe. Or how about that amazing hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, years ago? He used to say that he could see the play happen long before it ever happened. He would show up before the puck was on its way to that location. Or how about a mechanic? Maybe you get that understanding. They have years of experience working with motors. So when a motor is not working properly, a mechanic only has to listen to determine what's wrong. Again, he's using his senses, right? Take a doctor, for example. They spend years, and I do mean years, learning about the body, accumulating knowledge, and practicing so they can effectively make a decision and a diagnosis when presented with a set of signs and symptoms. And sometimes they get that gut feeling, though, and they send someone on for further tests. So we do the same thing in body talk, but the difference is we utilize the power of the intuition and understand the complexity of life to tune into those details that make up this person's unique health story. We need both. You've got to have left brain by, because, and right brain because left brain by itself lacks depth. Right brain by itself can be chaotic and ungrounded. So what about what Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, had to say? 
You know, I moved down here to where he says, I began to realize that an intuitive understanding and consciousness was more significant than abstract thinking and intellectual logical analysis. And our famous Einstein again, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. You see, many of the greatest minds of the world make advancements and discoveries in science intuitively. But the key is when they get that intuitive flash, they have the left brain structure to be able to interpret it accurately. So there was a brilliant mathematician, Elizabeth Rauscher. She said that when she made her biggest breakthroughs in mathematics, she said, it would just come to me. But for her, it would come as a big mathematical formula. She has the filters to understand the information that she's receiving. Someone who doesn't have the left brain knowledge of mathematics would not be able to interpret the same information, like myself, right? But this is how body talk practitioners are trained with the ability to understand and interpret what we're intuiting. So, you know, the knowledge base is not just restricted to body talk, and that's super important to understand. We bring in information from Eastern medicine, Western medicine, old and new science, quantum theory, and so on. So when I mean new science, right now at the time of this presentation, I mean the latest in medical research. I'm talking about epigenetics. I'm talking about microbiomes. You can learn more about those on the homepage of our website, accesscompletewellness.com. On the homepage, you will see some of our most read blogs that will lead to work about epigenetics and microbiomes. Or how about balancing hormones a more natural way by allowing the body to release blocks that are keeping the hormones from being balanced? So you see, in Body Talk, we're not closed-minded to any new information, any new science we welcome, because it helps us, because with Body Talk, we can adapt and change constantly with the latest science. So Body Talk offers a wealth of wisdom, and you just can't have a healthcare system that doesn't adapt. And I'm just saying that's the way it is. Body Talk's constantly adapting, and in doing so is committed to applying that latest information into our system. So we actually draw upon all fields of healthcare. When I work with other practitioners, medical doctors, natural therapies, I learn from them because I can apply their knowledge into my sessions. Each practitioner has a unique experience and a unique set of skills to help create a balanced approach to healthcare but it's adaptable and it's designed to utilize a lifetime of experience. So this protocol chart that you see on this slide here, it, it's a chart that contains categories of causative factors. And from there, I can zero in on the specifics of your story. So upon the details of your health story being revealed, it's then possible for that, your body to begin to self-heal. It's a shift in that perspective. It's an aha moment. And therefore, health requires an observer and an observation in order to manifest. You see, my ability to reveal the story and find your details, that's the catalyst for the change in your body. All right, so now that we've learned all these things, let's put it all together. I'm going to give you an example of an actual body talk session. And it's a formula, the formula is revealed by a practitioner using what we talked about earlier, structured intuition and the protocol and procedure chart to identify the details of your story. So this is an actual formula by Dr. John Veltheim. He is the founder of Body Talk. In this particular case, this woman was that presented in this uh, case study, she's in her 40s suffering from diabetes. The session began with structured intuition, muscle checking, right? and the body talk protocol chart to determine the priorities of what we call a formula. The first priority was the link between the liver and the pancreas to improve communication. We defined that relationship or determined on what level these two organs needed to be balanced. Now it's important to understand that it was the planning aspect of the liver because in Chinese medicine, the liver's the master planner. I call it the project manager of the body. And 
In this case, its role in blood sugar metabolism and its ability to store reserves for future needs was what was important. And this needed to be balanced in relation to the worrying function of the pancreas, which also plays a role in sugar metabolism. So the bottom line, dealing with the concept of worrying about planning on the physiological level as well as in life is what needed to be balanced here for this particular woman. Now the next set of links was between the kidney and the bladder. Now the bladder, among other things, controls our sexuality. The kidney relates to fear. So in this formula, we're dealing with the consciousness of fear of sexuality. Now, there was a bigger concept here though, and that was balancing a fear of aging. So this tied to her sexuality and her fear of not looking good or feeling attractive. Upon further conversation with this woman, she explained that this was a really big issue for her. Later in the session, what was determined is that when she was younger, her father abused her, and she confirmed this. So the stored emotion from that experience was contributing to her symptoms and needed to be released. Are you seeing the timeline in this person's life? So this is the formula that's essentially telling her story and specifically the details of her story. So now what exactly does a body talk session look like? Well, you know, you're gonna fill out an intake form. You're gonna lie on a massage table, face up, fully clothed. Uh, I'm going to use that structured intuition uh, to, and the muscle checking process of science of applied kinesiology to get muscular biofeedback from you. And um, sessions are generally 30 to 45 minutes. Now in a live presentation, we'd actually do a demonstration, but let me tell you a little bit about how this would look. So basically you would see that formula that we talked about, right? So picture that this lady is the one that that formula was about a moment ago. So now we have this formula that her body's waiting to, you know, kind of like see the forest through the trees. We've highlighted this now for her body. So there's two more steps that are gonna happen in this process. The first thing is we're gonna actually start to lightly tap on her head once that formula is finalized. Now tapping on the head introduces a standing wave or frequency, right? That causes interference with the brain's electrical activity. This activates the brain centers in such a way that it causes the brain to consider this new perspective that's been observed by the practitioner and realign these frequencies. So in other words, when we put together a formula or present a new perspective to the body-mind complex, it becomes an energy field. The body's also a field. So the idea is that when we're collapsing one energy field into another using the tapping process, this will change the energy blueprint of the body which in turn will change the physical structure of the body. And so for those of you who don't really recall that your body is energy, just think about when you walk across the carpet in the wintertime and you shock a family member or pet, right? There's a shock or how lightning likes people. Your body is energy and that's an important concept to keep in mind. Now we also tap lightly on the heart after we tapped on the head. We tap on the heart because it increases awareness further and it stores the changes. There's actually a lot of new research about this the, by, around the heart at the Institute of Heart Math. I encourage you to look that up, Institute of Heart Math. The works revealed that the heart has a complex intrinsic nervous system that's sufficiently sophisticated to qualify as a little brain in its own right. And there's actually a term for it, they call it heart brain. So in body talk, we tap on the heart to then store the new perception in the heart so that the changes are lasting. And you know, that heartbeat's connected to every single cell in the body and it radiates a field out far beyond just the heart. And the Chinese people have long believed that the heart is an important carrier of information. Interestingly enough, when you point to yourself and say, I am, where do you point? You point to your heart. Why not point somewhere else like your head or your face, right? If you have memorized something very well, you know it by heart. Why is it we don't say, I know it by brain? We think we store information in our brain, but the heart is the storehouse of all information about us. Somehow innately, we know this. 
Consider when a couple finds out they're pregnant. What is the most important first steps is to go hear the heartbeat and see it, right? Most people don't realize that the brain is not fully formed at that point. That's how significant your heart is. So from a body talk perspective, the tapping that we're doing on the head and the heart acts as a catalyst to initiate a focus, to observe those details and help the body process it. So, you know, you've learned all about body talk now and how it can work. And what we would normally do is actually teach you the one of the single most important, critical, commonly used techniques in the body talk system called cortices. So the underlying theory behind this is that all disease has a functional relationship with the brain or is reflected in the brain. So the theory postulates that everything that's problematic with the body is reflected in the brain as faulty activity. So these various symptoms sometimes cause cold spots of diminished blood supply or cellular activity in the brain. So the benefits of this technique, and by the way, we're not going to do this technique right now, but I want to tell you the benefits and I'm going to tell you where you can find this. Um, again, accesscompletewellness.com, where you found this same presentation that you're watching, there will be another presentation that you can watch just on the cortices technique. So Basically, this helps take the body out of fight or flight mode. It improves brain function and mental clarity. One of the things it does is it, you know, it literally will help, that, you know, your head may feel less foggy and, and your mental focus may sharpen or you just may feel more balanced and clear. So I encourage you to try it out. You know, you, you can't do any harm with the process and, and it has the potential to do so much good for you. It only takes a minute to do it. So I'd encourage you to make it a habit like brushing your teeth and best results are when you do it every day, right? Like brushing your teeth. So after a few months, your actual inner stress levels are going to normalize. So what you're going to find also on our website, accesscompletewellness.com, is a cortices technique under our resources section, self-application page. It's going to look just like this. The only difference is there's going to be written text below it that explains exactly the steps that you need to go through. And of course, along with watching that video. So let's cover body talk in a nutshell. So it's about understanding the psychology of the body and the influence that it has on your health. And rather than focusing on the symptoms, body talk finds the hidden causes of illness by looking at the physical, emotional, and the environmental factors. So body talk addresses the whole person and their whole story using the entire context of their life to improve their health. So you gotta look at it from a whole healthcare perspective and that means you gotta talk to the whole person. So health challenges often arise for a whole bunch of reasons. And when a practitioner is trained to look at the whole person, emotional, physical, and environmental influences, the true underlying cause of disease can be balanced. So you gotta synchronize with the whole story. So remember, every choice, every experience has contributed to your current state of health. Each scar, laugh line, mole has a unique story and a history. The whole healthcare synchronizes looking at the whole story by understanding the influence it has on your health. So we got to balance the whole spectrum. Whole healthcare is an integrative and it's designed to draw upon all fields of healthcare. So each practitioner has a unique experience, and unique skill set to help with a more balanced approach to healthcare. So what we got to look at is what's holding your body back from true health. So I encourage you to give your body a voice and uncover that story. Now let's talk through just a couple of testimonials. Um, I love this one. This is actually from one of my students who took Body Talk Access. You can find the next offering of that. It's a one-day class uh, on our accesscompletewellness.com website homepage. Under upcoming events, there will be um, the next offering of this class. She says, approximately six weeks 
After taking Body Talk Access, I was able to experience firsthand what a huge benefit taking this class was. I was traveling to Haiti on my return flight from Port-au-Prince. A lady had huge pains on what looked like her appendix area. The flight attendants asked if there was a doctor on board, and if so, if he or she could go to the back of the plane. I automatically thought that the fast aid technique might work on alleviating her pain. So after I saw that the doctor left the passenger, I walked back there and told the flight attendants that I would like to try this tapping head and heart technique so that the brain could send messages to the affected area in hopes of relieving her pain. Both the flight attendant and the passenger in pain agreed. The first round of tapping the cortices, the passenger had a cold forehead. In the second round, while she held the affected area, I had noticed that her forehead was warmer. And on the third and fourth round, her head was hot. I was very excited to feel this change. After I was done, the passenger said she felt much better. The flight attendants asked if I was a therapist. I told them no, but what an advantage to know this. Folks, this made a huge difference to this poor lady in pain. Even the doctor on board could not help her. Now there's more to this story. She actually received a letter from American Airlines. That letter was from their medical director, thanking her for her medical expertise. And they also gave her 15,000 bonus miles. Now, how amazing is that? Or how about this particular scenario? There's a young girl that went to visit her grandma for their summer. Shortly after her arrival, she started stumbling while walking. The grandma contacted her parents as the condition progressed, and before long, she could no longer walk without assistance. It was like concrete was on her feet. Her pediatrician, neurologist, orthopedic specialists were puzzled. In her first session, we discovered that she experienced Hurricane Katrina four years earlier, where she watched her grandpa die. Her return trip to New Orleans was her first time back since the event. We link this to the active memory of the fear. Her legs were paralyzed with fear. Remember the concrete we talked about earlier? In her second session, we worked on nervous system reconnecting. Her third visit, she came back to see me and indicated she had just played half a soccer game. I got to tell you, there's no greater feeling than when you can start to see these kind of results so quickly. There are more testimonials in a separate presentation at the same location that you found this presentation. <clears throat> so how can you learn more? <clears throat> Your best bet is to schedule a body talk session. You can do this by dialing this number or go to our website, accesscompletewellness.com and you can schedule your own appointment that way. I also encourage you to sign up for our newsletter at accesscompletewellness.com. A pop-up box will appear to allow you to sign up for it. You can also sign up for a separate newsletter from the bodytalksystem.com. I also encourage you, there's an amazing book, The Science and Philosophy of Body Talk. You can get that in the International Body Talk Association online store. Uh, that's found at bodytalksystem.com. And then I would also encourage you to sign up for that one day class, Body Talk Access, where you're going to learn six amazing techniques, including the one you just heard about on that uh, American Airlines flight. So I would encourage you, there's, it's an amazing one day class and you, you know, learn it in a day, use it for a lifetime. So again, I cannot encourage you enough to go to accesscompletewellness.com backslash upcoming dash events backslash, or you can find these again on our homepage. You'll see the next offering of Body Talk Access. I want to thank you so much for joining me in this presentation. I know you learned a lot, and I look forward to helping you with your healthcare journey. Thank you so much.